Okay, roll we'll call. Council Crichton. Here. Present. President Council Capano. Present. Present Council Neff. Present. Present Council Seda. Absent Council Bach. Present. Present. Thank you everyone for making it down here. Uh, it's an important issue. I know we've had conversations over the years on this. It's something that you know, city officials, business community, residents, and everyone's played a big role in. Uh, tonight, I really wanted to kind of lay out some of the, the concepts and ideas that have been pitched out there over the years and really just kind of walk through each one. The list is kind of extensive. I'll pass it along now. Um, and I understand that other people have commitments. I know Francis has to be in the license committee meeting. Uh, but this is one discussion of, of several as we lead towards what hopefully will be a consensus on this and in a vote by the council. Um, so this meeting is really a discussion meeting with the business community on rezoning specifically for the central business district. Um, so really, we want to be you know, very formal here, but I'd like to stick. I should cut out I'd like to stick somewhat to the uh, the order of uh, topics here. Um, so let's just go around the room real quickly and introduce ourselves, and then we'll get going. Council Council Six. Council Black. Council Black. Council Black. Jimmy Morris, Community Development. Chip Cato, EDIC. Francis Martina, Notion Latino Business Association. Jamie Thruley, Mayor's Office. Mike Dunn, Special Service. Matt Corey Hall, New Business Partnership. Costa Nichols, Buckley, is in Chamber of Commerce. John Wilson, Columbia Insurance. Brennan Crichton, City Councilor at Large. Uh, so the, the first section here is um, dealing with the, the use, the use regulations, I call it. Um, kind of just listed out a number of those that um, are, are not included with the uh, buy right in the central business district. Um, so I guess we just go down the list. So I, I guess one of the ideas is to su suggest that these uh, uses be changed to buy right, um, or P as they listed on the chart, not prior special permit or not being an unallowed use. Um, so the first one, philanthropic institutions. Uh, I don't know if folks here have any objections to that being something included in the downtown. Jim Cardell had used it in his Residential reuse is one of the, the you know, preferred uses for first floor development. It seems to make sense in an arts and culture district, but I'd love to hear thoughts, feedback, pushback. Anyone that's good with everybody? <laughs> Basically, it's limited to social, like libraries, museums. We're not talking about. Uh, I mean, that's halfway more, houses or anything like yeah, that. That's more, 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 more the, the definition. Yeah. Um, they're allowed anyways. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so that definition that might be pretty specific and those are the uses that... Yes. Um, Alright, so we like went on to stop it from rushing through this. So, uh, conference center, a uh, very detailed and oriented definition of a center where conferences are held. I don't... <laughs> I don't see again any objection to having these in anywhere really anywhere you know you bring people down there to have conferences. You know, it's a good thing to bring people into downtown central business to shake. But if there are concerns here. I don't think it makes sense. Um, next up is a fish market. I don't know why this was you know any different than other types of market. I assume at one point there's bad fish going around the city and then we saw that. <laughs> Um, but again, I don't know. Is this of any concern? <laughs> See, I told you we had it. This is going to be an off fish market. I mean, basically, it's basically a retail seafood establishment where, where you buy okay. fish to cook at home. Uh, How big is the fish? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's yay big. Um, so the next one is food service establishment. There's been a lot of you know, good suggestions about how to change this definition. I guess one concern that's been raised with the approach that we're taking, focusing on the central business district, to begin changing definitions or adding definitions um, at this point might hold things up because it would carry over, definitions would carry over for every other district um, throughout the city. So then we you know, would have to do a little bit more due diligence in, in trying to figure out what makes sense uh, everywhere. From, say if we were, for instance, to split out food establishments to you know, facilities that have alcohol or particular types of establishments. I'm not saying opposed to it, I guess it's just one concern I have is that it moves from a central business district discussion, which I think we have a really good uh, 
target on to a, a live or citywide discussion. Um, but open to your thoughts on that. I'd love to just allow this by, by right. And you know, I think one restaurant's down here, regardless of whether or not they have alcohol served or not, there is a license uh, commission in other folks' public safety that kind of deal with regulation of that. So I don't know that the council should really be all that concerned. But I'm up for. Well, when it comes to restaurants, I'll speak on that. Um, any obstacles that we can remove to make it easier, we, we should we should definitely look at that. When you look at Rosetti's, they need a special permit. Uh, Blue Ox, even when they first came in, into that downtown, they also needed a special permit. Uh, so anything we can do as a we in the city to make it easier, we, we certainly can support that. And I think on, on behalf of, of the businesses as well, with, with you know special permits, uh, every time they want to add anything into uh, their business, they go either have to come to the city, uh, come to the city council or licensing board. So I guess probably have to look into that and make it easier for new businesses to come to the city as well. So is there, is there any concern I guess, with the definition? And I don't want to shut down that conversation. I mean, folks think that. This definition, this definition needs to be changed. So, I mean, I feel like we're going to continue this zoning conversation as things move on. We go across other districts, and we could address The only comment I have is that this is the definition, but it doesn't specifically, I can't remember, call it excluded drive through. Oh, okay. You no one would want to drive through in downtown. Absolutely not. So, I think there's a footnote somewhere that specifies you know, drive through. It's not specific, isn't it? I hope so. If not, I believe that's in the water. Waterfront. Yes, the water can't have it. You can't have it. You can't have it. No. Okay. So that brings a good point. I think we should definitely. It's not addressing the waterfront, and it's definitely not addressing the waterfront. Doesn't Kentucky Fried Chicken have drives here? There's a lot of drives that they grab by. Oh. That was prior to the waterfront. Well, thank you, Mike. So I think that's something we'll soon look at. Adding it to the or including it somewhere else. Uh, any other thoughts on I really can't think of anything, just looking at it off the top of my head. Uh, so, the next one hotels. It's defined as commercial establishments offering lodging and using meals to the general public. Uh, right now, it's allowed by a special permit. Um, just something like for discussion of what people think. I mean, I think some of the thoughts were, you know, with some development potentially, um, or in Suffolk Downs, and the, you know, really no hotels in the area for, for people to stay at. Why not you know, allow businesses to come in? But I don't know if there are concerns or. The ordinance, um, town ordinance, defines hotels versus motels. Is there a certain number of nights you have to stay in hours? No, there's no hours. Uh, I feel like hotel is listed somewhere. Oh no, I think it was in the Delta Hotel. That's right. 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 Yeah. Uh, so no. It, Why does it not be? I was looking at everybody here. equally. I think Jay brings a good point. I think when I bring up the hotel, a number of folks have brought up concerns that they don't want to have um, you know, tons of facilities coming in that, that aren't really, you know, Hotels as we picture as hotels with more, you know, apartments for people to stay in you know, that cheap for free. Although Jim could weigh in on this, I don't think if somebody came to me and want, if you allowed it by right for hotel and want to open a motel, I don't think we could. Yeah. There's no real difference other than one's usually horizontal, one's vertical, in how they park the cars. I mean, versus the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so unless the definition got a little bit. Yeah. So how? I, I don't even know what the difference. Um, usually the uh, hotels are vertical and uh, hotels are usually linear if you can park a car and go right to your unit. And uh, it's a lot yeah, cheaper too. Yeah. Is there a way <laughs> to legally differentiate the two that you could look into? Absolutely. I mean, the length of stay I think would be important. Uh, and I can look at what other communities uh, do as well. Uh, encourage, you know, I think encourage here. Okay, so you think the length of stay is something good? Yeah, that's right. Not by the hour, but by the 
So that's the thing too. So I think in terms of you know differentiating the size and you know, the structure, uh, we talked about the dimensions in a little bit. That that could be something we can solve that way. I think the like to say is a legitimate concern. So maybe we can talk. About when we when we did the downtown uh, rezoning 10, 12 years ago, yeah. um, the business community raised concerns about hotels in the downtown for the reasons that we just had to talk about. You don't want to have the momentum that's going now, right? Yeah. And then have some dive where you can rent a room by the hour, or whatever, you know, just just to say. Um, conversely, the waterfront we felt was a very good place for a hotel. You could do that now without any permission from the city council. Uh, so just to give you some 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 of the background, so that's why we did we we left it um, as a special permit in the downtown. So I, I just think if we're going to do it by right, we really need to tighten up that definition so that it's a good hotel and not some type of a diet. Absolutely. And, and again, this is just throwing ideas on the table and working for them, so I appreciate that. Don't have two hotels already, one in Addison and one in Liberty City. Hotel Osmond in the Addison has been converted. So the Addison now is not a hotel, it's on top of Um, so next up is research and development. Um, I, th I think this really speaks to what we're trying to do to attract uh, you know, up and coming jobs or you know, current industries that, that are doing really well and can bring in new dynamics in the downtown. So I'm hopefully, you know, biotechs and you know, ITs and pharmaceuticals, I think, will all fall under the current definition. I don't know if it needs to be tweaked, but those are really the, the businesses we're trying to welcome down here. Um, so right now, it's not allowed. In the downtown, um, I'd more suggest doing it by right. And if we had to tweak any safety concerns with in terms of you know, what materials are used on site, um, yeah, I think we could handle that responsibly. But I don't know what the rest of it is. Could I just ask one question on that? Yep. The no manufacturing activity customarily occurs within 50 feet of the parking line. Yes. See how most of the parking lines are 100 feet across. There's no way they can do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I think that it, it, it definitely needs to be tweaked. And when we talk about the dimension, I mean, we're, we're you know, looking for more density, and this would not be possible. Well, that's right. what the intent is, though, is to keep manufacturing out, but allow research and development. In other words, you can. You want to make. Oh, I see. So just you know, making it, you know, but you're, you're, you're putting things together to see if you can really do this somewhere. But when it comes time to do that on a factory floor, that's somewhere else. Okay. Yes. Right. So you're not just say, you know, they're talking high tech. Or they're talking biotech. You know, the it's not the old days of having heavy machinery right there. I mean, until you get to the big farms, but you know, the 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 biotech companies, uh, you know, they're all in little offices anyways. They're researching and, and like you said, their development and whatnot is right there. So, so even the definition of manufacturing activity is related to Right, so that, that would exclude it. It should exclude, in other words, it's not to sell to anybody. Really, I mean, you don't, know, it's just my opinion. If you brought manufacturing down, downtown, it's not big enough to support manufacturing. Right, I agree. Uh, I agree. No room for trucks. Too close to be residential. It's not really manufacturing we're talking about. Mm -hmm. No. So, I don't know what you call it. You know, I don't think it's manufacturing. Closer to the definition. If anybody here can can find other communities or have suggestions on how to tailor that definition, if we have. I should mention too. I should mention the beginning. Diana Shakudis, uh, her mother-in-law, recently passed away. Today was a funeral, so she's not able to attend. But she's worked very closely with us throughout this whole process and continue to talk um, regularly about what should be down there. And also, um, we have an intern that's been helping do some of the research and she's looking into this stuff now. AJ Kukana will also come on here tonight because of law school finals. So, two very reasonable excuses. Um, but yeah, no, we should definitely take a look at that. I think it's. Well, this came in for the waterfront where limited production manufacturing was envisioned to be allowed, where somebody could set up a small manufacturing okay. on the waterfront. Um, and, and that's what drove, I think, this, this definition. So, I mean, I guess. It, 
I just don't know if the industry well enough what would constitute manufacturing if we're talking about some of these newer um, industries. Um, manufacturing is simply the act of making something? Making something yeah. that you're selling to somebody else versus making a prototype to be used. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're making a prototype, then that's you're making something that's not for sale, then that's not. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we can look into it. More, I guess. It's pretty easy when you when you walk out there, when you can see, you know what they're doing. Okay. Because if they're manufacturing, they're probably not doing it well enough. Versus research and development. Okay. Um, um, is this all yeah, sure. What? Next door. Oh, sorry. The uh, the next one, I mean, it doesn't really jump out. I mean, it's something you know, we have to have done there, but I thought it was fine when we were trying to encourage transit-oriented development and transit. That transit facility was not allowed in the downtown. Um, also, when we have a train station, bus station, and some water station not far away, I figured just to clarify to folks that we are encouraging transit, but I don't know what the pitfalls would be or if anybody has concerns with allowing that by right. Good. All right, so now, next up is the suggested, and I don't know if this is the right term, unallowable uses, Mike, but um, essentially some of the uses that either allowed by special permit or by right currently um, that we don't think make as much sense in the downtown. So these are largely automobile related, some gasoline and oil filling stations right now require a special permit. Uh, I, I don't know what everyone else thinks here, but I, I, I just don't know that we need any of those in the downtown. Uh, again, trying to encourage people to, to walk in streams in. There's plenty of gas stations. Uh, just one thing with that, some of these on a lot of the uses. I, I agree with that, but uh, <coughs> maybe that could be the next discussion about zoning. We're going to have to talk about uh, some of these uses and where they can go because where they're going to all end up is, you know, over in the same area <laughs> by Venice Street and Alley Street and it's kind of cluttered right now and you just, the more we exclude these types of businesses, which by the way, generate all kinds of jobs. I mean, when we talk about there's no jobs in Lent, there's a ton of jobs in auto repair, auto body used car sales, and, and, and there's a lot of people working, local people. We need more space for them. So the more we exclude these types of uses from other places, the, the more limited space for them in the, in the, you know, where they are right now. So just having said that, you know, uh, I agree with this, but you know, who really should, maybe this is the next phase of the discussion for zoning, we're going to go across the whole yeah. city, right, mm -hmm. eventually. Because we need GE to table, because they got so much vacant land, and so much use, uh, you know, so much land that we could be using for manufacturing, light industrial, mm -hmm. auto repair, those type of businesses, I mean, that they have no intention of using for a long time, and we're going to have to, do something with that land. We have to use it because there is no other place. I mean, where else is it going to go? Where else, you know, unless we exclude these places from everywhere in the city, right? There's no place we're not going to go up to Lynn Woods. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so you know, it's a very limited spot right now, and you know, it's getting more crowded and busier all the time, and we have to address that. You know, so but I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, no, I agree. It's from the board council, most of my almost uh, mm -hmm. a large percentage of the, the special permit request we get would be from all bodies and things like that. So the man apparently is there, so I was finding the best place for them to be. Uh, the other one on there was sales from the board vehicles. I, I don't know that there's ever going to be much of a need downtown for this. I don't think the common are doors to get in, but again, it doesn't seem to be. I think I'm the only one, Mr. Chairman, that uh, can remember Bob Reston downtown. So this next one, this is, this is probably not going to go as smoothly as the others. The uh, for retail and retail trade, there's a footnote um, 
um, dealing with the waterfront that only allows up to 5,000 square feet. So that's just retail and retail trade. Um, and given that we're looking to, to go up and kind of uh, you know, make the footprint of some of these businesses smaller, at least in my humble opinion, uh, I think following the waterfront in their zoning and recognizing that we'd rather go up than out, that having a limit to the foot footprint of what retail is um, would be something worthy of discussion. The, the, the history on that, Brendan, is um, we were trying to, when we did the waterfront, we were trying, we, we came up with that 5,000 square foot because we, we wanted to encourage mixed use. So that would be the first floor, everything above would be residential. So that, that's the history of that. And I think that, I mean, it's a great point, Jim. I think it conforms to what we're trying to continue to do down here. Uh, but obviously, this is not a, that's what we want to consider, pro business measure. So certainly open to discussion or you know, anybody concerns or issues that they have. And again, I don't, I don't know what the, I guess, the 5,000 number, um, you know, if, if that number needs to be tweaked or maybe again, we can take a look at what other communities have. But I think some type of limit to limit that for print so we don't have box type scores or I mean, again, just for retail, if a restaurant wants to go in and get a little bigger, but we'll push it to mixed use. Let's keep it mixed use. Are you pushing for mixed use and vertical yes. development? Um, so, with this apply, is this a building or just one user in a larger building? Um, so I think it would be that individual use. Individual right? units. Each individual retail unit would not be more than 5,000 square feet. So you could have a shoe store, you could have a, a pottery store, you could have a grocery store, but each is more than 5,000. Okay. Uh, but again, a lot of this is coming up the first time, so folks digest it. We're going to be having continued discussions. And um, so the residential reuse overlay is the next topic here. Um, right now, as it exists, it was based off of a 1,500 foot distance from Central Square, which you know is really the concept around uh, transit-oriented development, which is great. Given that the Central Business District is you know, largely opposed to that distance, uh, I guess the idea is to kind of merge the two and just have the language from Jim's baby to the residential reuse overlay district incorporated into the entire central business district. Um, and then also, this is a little bit separate from the reuse portion of it, but add additional properties that, that weren't included previously. So expand the central business district map to include the, the parcels that Eastern Bank headquarters currently on the main head building, Ernest Harvest Time, or any other ones that, that aren't currently uh, on the map. There's a couple, just if you look at the, the zoning map, there's a few little areas that Rock Street, Union Street. So yeah, I guess it's a question how how far to go down those areas. That's something that I've kind of wondered myself. And I don't know what other folks say. Yeah, should yeah. should yeah. include Rich Fuji as part of that? Yeah. I've sent two maps down to the council office earlier today. Um, yeah. I'll go to somebody. No, no, no. We're on the side. Motion for a pre freeze then. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I guess it, it's, it's how far you extend me. I, I love the central business district concept. I think it could work on the parts of the downtown that I could include, but I don't, I don't know. Um, and again, we we'll probably get into a more serious conversation because it goes over into other wards as well. Just moving in for suggestions how to tackle that. So, you think going down further down the union, Rod, is that? It would be helpful to know exactly what the problem is. Okay, we can just get it in Put that on the yeah. floor. Pause. Well, the next subject is the new development, right? And, and I can tell you that when we were when we were coming up with the downtown zoning, we were so uh, fixated that the primary uh, purpose of the zoning was to encourage residential development. We wanted people living in downtown. Uh, 
that it's, it was just an oversight. It, it, this should have always been in there. Um, we were looking at existing buildings, saying if you're an existing building, first floor, we want it to be commercial retail. Everything above, we want people living there. And we should have just included for new development as well, we want the same thing. You know? okay. so, so that was just an oversight. So I, I, I would, my personal recommendation would be that the council look at adopting that. Look next to, I know now, I'm trying to get <laughs> So this would be, I guess this would be the uh, earnings. Yeah. Uh, look over here, this would be Eastern Bank, that would be the VNA. Now, Brendan, can I ask you, um, has Eastern Bank been including the discussion on how do they feel about? They have not, I mean, they're, they're more than welcome to be at the table. This is kind of an initial one. I don't, are they a member of the chamber? Yes, yes they are. Yeah, if you guys could, I mean, you guys use the space, so. You'd like to take the temperature? Yeah, definitely. Mike, obviously welcome. Yeah, I don't know what the drawbacks would be. I don't know. So I should say our lawyers had a look at it. Yeah, no, I'm sure they did. So <laughs> all these are used to be So you said they would not be forced to put a park. No, but, but it, it's a matter so, of. If, if they want to sell yeah. the building, you know, what are they limited to? The new if it's if it's a interior, like two times. So we're on. Oh, Tremont. Okay, Tremont. Yep. State. So this is so the stock market. Right. Exactly. Same areas. Right. Exactly. So we're just which is where the parking garage and the is, and this is the van building. Okay. You know, and it's funny how it hopscotched over. This is Eastern Bank, right? Yeah. Uh, right. No, no, no. Yeah, the VNA. Yeah. 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 I mean, not this entire parcel. Oh, right here. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. Right here. Yeah, because no, this is like Bain storage yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. Eastern Bank in a parcel. Right here. Okay, you're right. You're right. Transfer station. That's VNA, right? Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Yeah, what's this tunnel down here? This is a tunnel by the residence. This is the second one. It's residential yeah. reuse over yeah. right. So, so brother, the prime building is. Oh, this side? This way here. Oh, is that in there too? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's a great point. What was your question? What was your question? That's funny. This is Joy Street. Okay, I see it. Well, Sorry, Mary's class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the second thing to go. Do you want these? <laughs> 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 She's like, oh. <laughs> 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 but go I was just saying, I was just saying, the, building, the prime building downtown by Capitol Diner. That to us is, is a great building for residential right. use. Yeah. And if you look at the how it's currently zoned, that's zoned industrial. Yeah. So that's something that. Yeah, that's what we were saying. That's the one with the signs? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, the, the, the three industrial zone parcels down there at that end, going over Pleasant Street and over to the what? Broad Street. So, yes, so, yeah. Street. Yeah. Prime so, and, so you, get, yeah. you get the blood building also? Is that that's the one building is, is yeah, industrial zone. So is that something we should put across the street? Consider? I don't think so. Oh, so right now. I think it's on the off off. Off. Yeah. Yeah. But where the prime building is, that, that should yeah. not be industrial. Um, so uh, again, it's, you know, discussion in terms of data. I just think there's a few programs that exist here. If you look at the, the reuse overlay, really, I mean, there's only a few properties that are included there, so why not just take that, those definitions, and slide them over into the entire sense of business district. Um, so, I guess, any other questions? Um, so, next up, we talked a little bit about dimensions. Um, the height requirements right now. It's, uh, there, there are no minimum height requirements in downtown. I looked at some of the waterfront um, zoning plans, and it, there's a number of them WF1, WF1A, WF3 that require you know, three stories, 36 feet at least. Um, again, kind of going with that concept of encouraging buildings to go up rather than down. We don't want 
going to see a number of single-story structures in the downtown or in the area that's supposed to be as dense as possible. Um, so I, I would suggest adding a minimum. But again, that is kind of putting up hurdles for you know some businesses, but I think we'll welcome the de development that we want to see down there with the mixed-use concept. Um, and again, the numbers were, were based off of another district, so if they're not appropriate or if they're other suggestions. And also, um, we talked about maximum height. Um, currently now it's only five stories in the central business districts. Um, again, trying to look to, for ways to, to get folks to go up and at least allow that. I don't think that right now the market would you know, have 10 story skyscrapers in the city, but um, allowing them to, to make the most of their property. Um, so again, up for discussion what that height um, the problem would be, but I think it would allow for better suited mixed use development in downtown. Um, so, on the height front, uh, is the usage still going to be uh, the same? Meaning, for, so let's say yeah. if it's three stories, first floor would be commercial retail, and then the next two would be residential? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it would still fall into your blueprints for the reuse district. Um, so I guess that really the, the last bullet here kind of mentioned the uh, the units that are allowed, um, which I think Goya alluded to earlier, which are only I think it's only 25 for the um, reuse. So if we're encouraging folks to go up to you know say 10 stories or whatever, we, we end up with allowing for more units by right. Um, it's something again I don't have. Figure, but and I don't know what like, what the 25 is based off of, but what the appropriate um, level of units would be. Did you know what the do you know where 25 came from? Is that just you know kind of best practices? Yeah. So I guess if we were to double the out, I'm not sure what we could. One way to look at it would be to you know, just increase percentage wise. We were came when we did the downtown. We worked with the, the chamber, the partnership, and we used to have, we, back then, we were the back 10, 12 years ago, but we had several public meetings, mm -hmm. and that number, it was a result of the input that we received right. from the business community and, and the residents. So I guess, for now, it's folks want to jump in. We can leave it at that. It needs to be revisited if we revisit it. And, and, I mean, the idea is, is not that people are knocking down existing buildings and putting up new structures, or are you going to allow that by right? Uh, the only reason, you're talking about going up, and I know when you start talking about going up with the existing buildings as they are now, all of a sudden you're talking about retrofitting for earthquake and, and, and you know, makes it pretty cost prohibitive, so. So you're afraid of existing structures? Well, I'm just, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm looking at my building and if I'm on the third floor, we're talking steel pilots, so, uh, you know, it's either do two floors or, or knock it down and, and build something new, so. Yeah, no, that's okay. So, the biggest concern would be that it would take away the character of the downtown, if that No, I mean, we had a building downtown that we had to do. They added two stories to yeah, it. It can be done if you have the money. If you have the money, right? It can be done. I mean, the earthquake calls and whatever. But, um, and then we had the, the fire, we had fire that opened up a piece of land. And we ended up with a one story structure because we didn't have the ability to go mixed use and go up above. And a building that size, we looking at, would have had more than 25 units most of us. Because they were looking at five stories and forced me to go to five units just to support the construction itself. Alright, so let's try to put our heads together and find the magic number. I guess. Yeah, that's a good one. And again, first of many discussions, so as it was when Jim went through the process as president, I think we the same here. Um, so, frontage was another issue we talked about in a number of the, the studies related to the downtown. It suggests you know, that the first floor commercial and retail units abutting the sidewalk. Um, it's something we've 
you know, straight from when you take a look at the DNA, it was, you know, we weren't able to um, get that included as part of the plan. Uh, but I think moving forward, removing the requirement that you have 50 feet minimum frontage, I don't know what the downsides are, but um, I think it's something worth exploring if we want to have a walkable downtown where it more resembles um, you know, central business district rather than these offset office parks. So I mean, you take a look at Shaw's or even East Rink Hegwar, it's, it's, we don't want to have that type of frontage. We want people there, we want them on the main streets. So by removing that requirement, maybe it makes more sense for them to do so. And then also, and I Mike, maybe you can speak to this a little bit. The, the front end, there was a portion of the dimension regulations that it says like front, side, back. Um, I didn't understand what the measurements were there. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of the. Is it feet or. I, I mean, there is feet. And, and, and I'm just putting this small. About 50 feet of frontage in a downtown district is, is a bit. You don't necessarily need it. The state with larger community oh. is 20. So then it says minimum yards, um, and it has front sides rear. Mm -hmm. And for the central business district, it had um, five, nine, and five. So is that just I mean, what it appears well, to be? I guess the parentheses throw you off. Those are footnotes. Uh, those are footnotes. <laughs> no, <laughs> very well prepared for that. The footnotes probably need to be tweaked because they make references to other uses that may or may not be with what you're talking about, about residential. Um, tech, in a downtown area, you're looking for a zero lot setback, is what you're looking for. And, uh, on all of them. On all of them. Build right out to your property line. Um, but if you go to like footnote five, it talks about building a one or two family or semi detached house. So, you know, and then it tells you this any businesses or butts in the city of Lynn, property that's zoned residential or used for residential has to have a seven and a half foot side deck, even if they're in a business zone that doesn't require any side deck. It's just something that's online since 1926, so that business buildings, you know, didn't crowd out a residential lot. So you think if we were to eliminate the frontage requirements and these requirements, the footnotes would not be needed? Or? Oh, these footnotes, yeah, those footnotes most likely should be abolished for the central business you just take right out of the table. Okay. They really don't have any purpose there other than the business since 1926. Okay. Um, all right, so that kind of brings us to the end of my thoughts. One, one last point, I guess, on the parking of things, which is going to play a big role in this, obviously. Mm -hmm. Residents and businesses have concerns about how to approach the parking issue downtown. I think one of the safeguards we have now for along with the parking requirements is that we don't require parking for one unit, two units, we require for three, the development, is that? The that only it? use that requires parking downtown is an apartment with more than two bedrooms. More than two, sorry, bedrooms, not units. So, anything else that there is no parking requirement about that. And, and I think we're talking again about walkable areas in downtown and transit for, that's the best approach to take, and the parking problem will be worked out, like outside of the, the zone. Or is it the most other folks think you should tackle it. Right now, we'll come right at the same level. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Just, uh, again, the first of many, so we'll have an extension. Well, the residents, um, I don't know how we can we get like, everybody down here, but I think the man holding the camera, along with some of uh, is active downtown host come in here and let us know their thoughts and then um one is committee will have you know discussion whether or not we want to set this out for public hearing and we feel like that, that bar any concerns but none of this is all paper yet these are just more of a brainstorming session i think uh, based off the suggestions of many of you and um, city officials that we use all right everybody get it any yeah yeah Awesome, thanks so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So, no favor? I'll do this championship.